welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and shared exclusively through iceflowstudios.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating these minimal loading bars inspired by the folks over at 365psd.com, which is an amazing online resource for designers. This is uh, the inspiration for the tutorial today. Go check these guys out. Make sure you buy something from their site and visit it and share it with all your friends. It's a great resource. One new free high quality PSD every single day. Let's go ahead and learn how to create these loading bars. They're actually pretty simple and they're very easy to edit and update once we've created them. Let's go ahead and bring back our Photoshop interface here and create a new document, Command or Control N. And I'm going to work at my favorite size, which is 1280 by 720 for the sake of these tutorials at least. And I'm going to name it Minimal Loading Bar. And I'm going to hit OK. Collapse my Adjustments panel and open up my Layers panel. I think the first thing I'm going to do here is Alt or Option, double click my background layer just to unlock that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and double click on this black color swatch to bring up my color picker. And I'm going to set my foreground color to CF, CF, CF. It's just kind of a light gray. Hit OK. And I'm going to hit Alt Backspace and the Option Delete on the Mac. That's going to fill our background layer with a nice light gray. Now what I want to go ahead and do is create a new layer. So we're going to go Layer, New, Layer. And it's going to ask me for a name. I don't care about that. Hit OK. There's our new layer right there. We're going to double click and we're going to name this layer 4% Noise. Now what we're going to do with this layer is we're going to go Edit Fill. We're going to fill this layer with 50% gray. We're just basically building a nice background because everything looks better with a really cool background behind it. And it's really going to give some context to our uh, little loading bars. So we've got 4% Noise layer here. We're going to go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. What a surprise. We're going to set the amount to 4%. And we're going to set the distribution to Gaussian. And we're going to tick on monochromatic. We don't want to introduce any color. So hit OK. There's our first layer of noise. We're going to set the blend mode here to soft light. Wonderful. Doesn't look like much has happened. If you're following along, you can see that something has happened, especially if you zoom into 100%. So don't worry. Then we're going to go layer, new layer again. And we're going to name this guy right here in the new layer dialog box. We're going to name this 8% noise. Hit OK. And we're going to fill this layer with that same light gray that we filled our background with. So I'm just going to hit, well, it's still our foreground color. So we can just go Alt, Backspace, Option, Delete. There we go. We're going to go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. This time, we're going to double the amount of noise. We're going to go 8%. We're going to leave the distribution at Gaussian. And we're going to uncheck Monochromatic. So there's going to be a little bit of noise, or a little bit of color, excuse me, we're introducing there into the noise. Hit OK. From the drop down menu for the blend modes, we're going to go and set this to Soft Light as well. So there's sort of the beginnings of our background. We're just going to, for the effect, we're going to create a new layer here using a new layer icon. And I'm going to name this uh, Swath. You can name it Highlight, whatever you want. Grab the Brush Tool, and we're going to go for just the, one of the default basic brushes here. If you hit the Flyout menu, you can go Basic Brushes. And we just want the 500 pixel, very soft edged brush. Brush, excuse me. Set the Opacity to 100%, Flow 100%. We want our foreground color to be white, so I'm going to hit the letter D, which is going to revert my colors to default, and then X to flip those colors. And I'm just going to paint sort of a little zig right through the middle, just like so, and we're going to set this layer to the blend mode of soft light. So just a little bit of a highlight there in the center. Very cool. We've now created our background. Before we go any further, we do need to create a little pattern that we're going to be using later on in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and go File New to create a new document. And I want the width and height of this document to be 8 pixels. So 8 by 8. Perfect. Hit OK. And then we're going to go View, Fit on Screen. Note the hotkey, Command or Control 0. It's a very useful uh, hotkey, especially if you work with large images or graphics a lot. Something to keep in mind. Fit on Screen, it's going to zoom this 8 by 8 square as big as uh, I can get, which is 3,200% at this point. And what we want to do is we're going to Alt double click or Option double click the background to unlock that. And we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to grab the Pencil Tool. It's located beneath the Brush Tool, right there. The Pencil Tool is just a one pixel squares. I'm going to hit the letter D to set my foreground color to black so I can see it. And you can see I'm just these crazy black squares. I actually don't want any of that. What I want to do is draw a line from this top corner all the way to this bottom corner. So I'm going to drop a dot up in the top corner, hold down my Shift key, and click on the bottom corner. There we go. Drew a line right across the screen. And I'm going to thicken this line up just by placing a line on either side of it. So click, Shift, click. Click, shift, click. There we go. This is going to be our pattern. We just need to knock out the white background. So select a layer zero, drag it down to the garbage. Beautiful. Now that we've done that, we can go edit, define pattern. And you can name it something creative if you want, or don't be creative at all, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit OK. 
and we can now close this. Nope, don't need to save it, get rid of it. There we go, we've created our pattern, great. Now what we need to do is go ahead and begin drawing our the track that the loading bar is gonna sort of load into. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And I'm just gonna take a guess at it. The ideal height I've found in this case for this graphic is six pixels. However, before we start drawing that out, grab your rounded rectangle tool. We need to change a few settings on this tool. Up here in the options toolbar, Go ahead and set it to draw paths. That's the second icon in from the left. A little pen icon with a little path. And also set the radius to six pixels. Now that we've done that, go ahead and just draw out a nice rounded rectangle. Something like that. It should be like a very long pill. Something that would be impossible to swallow. Need you, uh, or if you had to swallow something like that. So let's go ahead now and just, we're gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and just take a quick measurement to see how close to six pixels tall we are. And I'm just gonna measure just like that. And then I'm gonna go window info. And it's telling me, hey, the height here is 13 pixels. So that's way too big. Let's just make a quick adjustment here. Matter of fact, let's just junk the path and restart. So I'm gonna drag the path to the garbage and let's draw a new one. So I know I gotta be a much thinner. So I'm gonna go something like that. And let's just take another quick measurement just because we're being picky here. Something like that. Open up that info panel. Hey, look at that. Height is six pixels, which was a total guess, but that's gonna work out just great for us. We can save this work path if we want by double clicking it. We're gonna leave it as a work path. Go back to layers, and what we need to do is go layer, new fill layer, solid color. We're gonna name this guy track. Again, this is the track that's going to be filled with the filling of our load bar. Hit okay. And we can just fill it with white. The color here does not matter at all because the first thing we're going to do is right here, this fill opacity, we're gonna reduce this to zero, which is gonna get rid of that because this is only going to contain a few very select layer styles. We're gonna go layer, the layer style, drop shadow. And drag this dialog box right back into here. What we wanna do is use the drop shadow really as a lower stroke. So it's not really gonna be acting as a shadow at all here. So we're gonna set the blend mode here to normal. We're gonna double click on the color swatch, set the color to white. You can see already, not really looking like a shadow at all with the color white. Hit okay, reduce the opacity to 55%, and we're gonna set the distance to one and the size to zero. So now it's just a very thin line. You actually really can't even see it because the outline of the path is sort of covering it up. Okay, next we're gonna apply an inner shadow. And this inner shadow, well, let's actually select inner shadow, there we go. We're gonna set this to the blend mode of normal. And again, the color is gonna stay black here. We're gonna set the opacity to 20%. And we're gonna uncheck use global light. And we're gonna set the angle to 90. Set the distance to one pixel and the size to zero. And I'm gonna hit okay actually here for a second. And I'm going to deselect this mask. So I'm just gonna select this layer below. And I'm gonna double click on the little FX icon to bring that back up. So we can see our changes sort of real time now. Great. Next, what we're gonna do is apply an outer glow. And this outer glow is gonna be somewhat subtle. We're gonna set the blend mode to overlay. And we're gonna set the opacity to 40%. And we're gonna set the size, we're gonna boost it just a little bit. Let's go six pixels, great. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add an inner glow. So I'm gonna select inner glow. And, oh, there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and set this guy to a uh, blend mode of normal. We'll set the opacity to 10%. We're gonna double click and change the color. Oh, we don't wanna create a color swatch, what did I do? We want to go ahead and just set the color to black. So hit OK. There we go. So it's just a very, very subtle inner glow. Wonderful. We also just want to go ahead and set a color overlay here. I'm going to double click on the color and we're going to set the hexadecimal code to DBDAE1. That's exactly what I want. Hit OK. And there we have it. We're going to hit OK. And that's our track. So we've made the track. Now we're gonna duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna name this layer Fill Color. That should be good. And I'm going to go Layer, Layer Style, Clear Layer Style. So we're just gonna go back to that plain white shape. That's awesome. What we need to do now is fill this with a color because this is gonna sort of be the, the, the color here is gonna color all the effects that we place on top of this. So I'm gonna double click the little color icon in my Layers panel and I'm just gonna choose sort of a, um, 
a very desaturated medium blue. I found that when working and, and lopping on lots and lots of layer styles, especially overlays and stuff that's going to brighten and intensify color, it's good to start with a somewhat muted medium color. So something like a kind of a bland blah blue will probably work great. And if not, we can always come back and tweak it in the end. It's super duper easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. There we go. We've got our fill color. Problem is, we don't see the track. This would be sort of the 100% loaded uh, bar. We want to go to about 50% for the sake of seeing what's going on. So I'm going to grab my direct selection tool right here, the white arrow, hotkey A. And I'm going to highlight the right side of my bar. You can see what's happening is I'm just selecting those anchor points on the vector mask, which is a path. I'm selecting those anchor points, not the ones here on the left. And I'm going to hit my shift key. I'm just going to go back a whole bunch, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 times until I'm back to about the 50% loaded area. Great. Now that I've done that, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. Command or Control J. This initial color layer, that's it. It's just a color. This layer on top is going to be all the layer styles applied, which are going to sort of make this look really snazzy and start looking pretty sharp. So maybe we can just give this layer a name called Layer Styles. Something you know, sort of bland again. Immediately reduce the fill to zero. Now we're going to go layer. Well, let's actually deselect the, the the path by just selecting one of these layers down here. Go up here, select the layer, and then go layer, layer style. And let's start with the drop shadow. We just need a very, very subtle drop shadow on this guy. So we're going to leave the blend mode at multiply, color black, that's perfect. And we're going to set the opacity, let's go with 30. Uncheck global light. We can actually leave global light on if we want. I'm going to uncheck it. And then I'm going to set the angle to 90 degrees, distance to 1, and size to 1. So just a very, very subtle drop shadow. Now what we need to do is go ahead and apply an inner shadow. So with the inner shadow, we're going to go ahead and set this guy to a blend mode of overlay. We're going to set the color to white. Hit OK. Again, we can leave global light on if we like. We're going to set the angle to 90 degrees. The distance we will set to 2, and the size we will set to 0. So it's just going to be a very hard sort of highlight running across the top of our color. Looking not so great right now, but don't worry about that. We'll make it look amazing uh, shortly. So now what we need to do is go ahead and apply an outer glow. So I'm going to hit outer glow, select that. We're going to set the blend mode again to overlay. We're going to use a lot of overlay here. Opacity of 50%. And a size, let's cut down on the size, maybe make the size about three. So we just want this sort of loaded fill to be glowing a little bit as it's running down the length of this bar. Awesome. Now what we need to do is go ahead and apply an inner glow. So I'm going to apply an inner glow. We're going to set the blend mode here to color dodge. We want to make this a little bit more intense. You're going to see we're really going to get some intensity there. We're going to reduce the opacity to 40%. Leave the, for, uh, the fill color as white. We're going to set the source to center. And let's increase the size just a little bit, maybe six pixels, which is actually is going to pull it away from the edges a little bit more. So you can see before inner glow, after inner glow, we're really starting to add some shape there, which is awesome. Now what we need to do is go ahead and give this a gradient overlay. So the gradient overlay is going to be kind of interesting because this is going to increase and sort of spread out as the graphic spreads out for us as it, you know over here when the the loading bars at about 10% the graphic is going to be very compressed when it gets to 80 90 100% it's going to sort of spread out and this gradient overlay is going to act it's a live layer style so it's going to really uh, do some cool things for us as it you know depending on whether or not it's way over here or you know nearly at 100% let's go ahead and set the blend mode to overlay you're going to see immediately starts to interact with the color beneath us. However, it's a little bit too harsh, black going to white. So I'm going to select my gradient bar there, which opens up the gradient editor. And I've got a gradient I've saved right here, this sort of fade gray, I've called it. And it is a color stop of 80, 80, 80 is the hexadecimal code, running to a color stop of a lighter gray, which is BF, BF, BF. Awesome. Hit OK. And all we need to do is change the angle from 90 to 0. We want the dark to be over on the left, running to the lighter side over on the right. Now we're starting to get a dynamic looking shape there, and that looks pretty cool. So now comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and apply that pattern that we created. So I'm going to go hit Pattern Overlay, and it gives me kind of this crazy pattern here. I'm going to go to the drop down menu, and I'm going to select the last pattern here, which is that one we defined way back a few minutes ago. So I'm going to select that, and you can see we've got these black bars running across our loading bar. Awesome. Go to blend mode, set this to soft light. You can see already interaction with the color beneath it. And we're just going to reduce the opacity to, let's say, 50%. Something like that. Awesome. So now it's all interacting with that blue color underneath. Next, what we need to do is go ahead and apply a satin 
layer style to this. Now the satin layer style is kind of interesting. I'm not going to talk about exactly what it does because it's kind of weird and all over the place and maybe even I don't totally understand it yet. We're going to go ahead and set the blend mode to overlay and the fill color, oh, what did I do there? The fill color to white. There we go. Hit OK. Set the opacity. Well, leave it at 50%. That works great for us. Distance of 8 pixels and a size of 8 pixels is all awesome. You can leave this default sort of contour going on in there and that's good. Next, what we need to do is apply a stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and tick the stroke on and select stroke. I'm going to set the size here to 1. I'm going to set the position to inside because the, the content of our track never spills outside of it. And I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay and reduce the opacity. Let's bring it way down, something like 10. That's great. So you can see it just looks like we have a plain old dark blue stroke, but because it's black and the opacity is just cranked way down, really any color we put underneath there, all of a sudden the stroke is just going to look like a darker version of that color. If it's orange, the stroke is going to be a darker orange. If it's green, the stroke will be a darker green. Great. Go ahead and hit OK. Now we've basically finished our loader bar. I'm just going to zoom out, hit Command or Control 1, and there it is at 100%. So you can see just three simple layers. Now the cool thing about this, before I let you go, we're going to go ahead, we're going to select these three layers, and we're going to duplicate them. I'm going to hold down my Alt or my Option key, click and drag them up. You can see I've got them up here. Actually, I'm going to undo that. What I want to do, I'm going to double click, and I'm going to change the color of this top layer to white. You don't see any of the color. It's just simply for visual reference in my Layers panel. Because both of these outside layers are white, I know that here, this inside layer, this is my color layer. So let's say I want to edit this. Well, let's say we want to create a second bar. We would select all three layers, select the bottom layer, hold down your shift key, select the top layer, hold down the alt or option key, drag them up, drop. You've got a duplicate of those three layers. Great. Without letting those go, I'm going to grab my move tool. We're going to just drag this guy straight up. So let's do a couple things. Let's make the fill sort of more advanced. In, in our track and then change the color of it. So what we need to do is we need to edit both of these vector masks. It's super easy. Grab the direct selection tool, highlight that side of the, the, uh, the path. I'm on the fill color layer. I'm just going to go shift, hold down my shift key and I'm going to hit the right arrow key one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And I'm going to do the same exact thing up here for the layer styles. I'm going to highlight that side of the path one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there we go. We've moved them both right over. Then if I just want to change the color of this, double click on that blue. And let's say we want to make it sort of a peachy orange. I'm going to come down here to the oranges. Oh, that actually looks kind of cool right there. You can see that sort of these sort more desaturated and lighter colors are the ones that work best. If I go too intense, it starts to kind of blow out and we lose a lot of detail. But if that's what you're going for, I mean, you know, try anything. Do whatever you think would be cool. I'm going to go with the more subtle and subdued color. Hit OK. And just like that, you can create multiple graphics. They're all, they interact with all these layer styles and they're all easily editable because they're all shape layers. And just like that, you've created a very minimal loading bar from scratch. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a thing or two. Make sure you check out tutvid.com and iceflowstudios.com for all kinds of great tutorials and tips. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at tutvid. Thanks for watching.